Hello, friends and enemies. I'm going to read <clears throat> some interesting pages from this book. Mm. Buddha in the Gospel of Buddhism by Ananda K. Kumara Swami. Yes, it's an old book. <clears throat> it's not published anymore. Well, not in this edition. There may be newer editions. But it's an oldie but a goodie. Let's see. Originally published in 1916. So it's well over a hundred years old. <clears throat> so, let's see. Who's the author? Dr. Kumaraswamy. Mm, doesn't see who he was. But says what he aimed to do. He aimed to set forth the gospel of Buddhism as simply as possible according to the Buddhist scriptures and to expound the Buddhist systems both in relation to their Brahmanical origins and to analogical systems of Christian mysticism. He has a concluding section on Buddhist art. Western readers do not often have a chance to consider so lucid an exposition of these matters by an authority on Buddhism who is also keenly aware of the traditions of the West. Uh -huh. <laughs> it cost $2.95 uh, when it was published. Okay. So, well, it, guess what? It starts off with the life of the Buddha. That's what I'm interested in right now. We don't get to hear much about who the Buddha was. It's very mythological. <clears throat> so, I'm reading as much as I can to find out who this guy was. <clears throat> His birth. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, His birth. That's part one. The life of the Buddha. His birth. Mm, then there's another section. The legendary Buddha. And then there's the incarnation of the Buddha. Hmm. Or should it be the incarnation? Hmm. Kala Devala. This is, might be an interesting place to start. The Four Signs. Mm. The Bodhisattva. Bodhi means awakened or awakening mind. And Sattva is a uh, being. Being a, a person. So the Bodhisattva is a person that is striving to become awakened. So technically there's non-Bodhisattvas. That's us or people that are not training, that are not spiritual athletes yet 
maybe getting started. But the spiritual athletes, the ones that are professional spiritual athletes, that are way up there on their way to becoming Buddhas, those guys are Buddhas in training. They're, they're called Bodhisattvas, right? And they make a vow, a Bodhisattva vow, to promise that they'll, that all their intentions and motivations and actions are based on the promise that they're going to attain Buddhahood, enlightenment, for the benefit of all sentient beings. So they're not going to become a Buddha just for their own selfish greed. They're going to do it for their the benefit of all sentient beings. Uh, well, that includes themselves. So there is a little bit of selfishness in it. <clears throat> but they're expanding their, their selfishness to include everyone. Okay, so enough of that. The Bodhisattva is never entirely forgetful of his high calling, which is his vow to become a Buddha. Yet it is needful that he should be reminded of the approaching hour, and to this end the cosmic Buddhas made audible to Siddhartha. Even as he sat and listened to the singing of the dancing girls, the message, Recollect thy vow to save all living beings. The time is at hand. This alone is the purpose of thy birth. And thus, as the Bodhisattva sat in his beautiful palaces day after day, surrounded by all the physical and intellectual pleasures that could be devised by love or art, he felt an ever more insistent call to the fulfillment of of his spiritual destiny. And now were to be re revealed to him the four signs which were to be the immediate cause of the great renunciation. I'll stop right there. Huh? Mm. 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 Like I said.